The truth comes from the right questions, and that qu the right questions come from the unlines, and sometimes the truth will come as well from directly. What we did was a very simple chemical um, set of reasoning. We, we discovered that the material that we were putting into a worm and causing gene silencing was impure and that the, the component responsible for the silencing was uh, an impurity called double-stranded RNA. And once that fact becomes known, there's a lot of con biological connections that come together around the concept of what double-stranded RNA does for cells and what it does for viruses and when it's there and when it's not. But our most significant contribution, the contribution of my group, was just essentially recognizing this chemical contaminant as being responsible for the gene silencing that was being observed. There are really three elements of the sort of ongoing work in the RNAi field. One is to understand how this process happens, how the cell senses foreign information and how it uses that information to clean up its own act essentially and not let the foreign molecules get too out of control. The second set of questions is a question of how this might be used as a directed therapeutic method and all of the different uh, needs that will be, have to be met for one to be able to harness this natural process to be able to do therapeutic intervention. And the third challenge, I think, is understanding what the process of this interference does for the cell, why it's important that cells and organisms have this, and what kinds of stresses in the environment or in their day-to-day -day life are responsible for the need for the, this very effective mechanism for blocking double-stranded RNA and for blocking a lot of other types of unwanted activity. I've pretty much started out in life with an excitement about science, and coming from a family where there was a lot of interest in learning about various things and, and a lot of interest about in learning about the world. I've been extremely fortunate in the opportunities, um, starting with really outstanding public education in the state of California um, from the public schools and from the University of California and many really excellent teachers who were um, underpaid and overworked but always enthusiastic about, about teaching all of us um, unruly students. Um, as a graduate student, I was at a wonderful institution, MIT, and worked for Phil Sharp, who was a really great mentor at the institution. Um, and that followed up by uh, three years at another remarkable institution, the British Medical Research Council. Um, I was at the Laboratory of Molecular Biology in Cambridge and, and really had an opportunity to get my feet wet. Nobody knocking on the door and saying, what results have you got today? Um, spent a fair amount of time just reading things in the wonderful Cambridge libraries. And again, had great sort of classmates, that, that um, postdoctoral fellows that sort of showed me the way and sort of encouraged um, interesting thinking. I find is the best way to inspire young people to follow a career in science is to let them hands on be able to work with scientific samples and scientific questions, even if it's, uh, as long as it's not dangerous, but even if it's not um, very clean or a little bit messy, or um, it's something that, that they're not gonna find the answer to the cure for the common cold in, in their fourth grade class, I think it's important to let them have at it in terms of asking scientific questions. And often, from the point of view of a uh, sort of middle-aged scientist, you actually get some of the most interesting questions from talking to, to young people and young people going back to age two um, where one can, one can see questions that really drive the, the basis for research. We, can, we have a lot of technology and, and one of the things that's limiting is really asking the right question a lot of the time. I guess my best advice is, is sort of the, the three-word version of it is pursue the unexpected. <laughs> if, if find things that out there in the world that aren't predicted by the information that's present and at hand and see what those, what the, what's responsible for that. A lot of times 
those are issues that are very exciting, but we don't have the techniques to pursue yet. But a lot of times they're, they're interesting. So I think that the kind of science that goes in against the grain is often the most exciting science.